Hey guys, so today we're going to do the species area curve data analysis. Um, I'm going to show both data from the forest species area curve and the rock pool, because depending on your section, you may have done either one. Um, first, I'm going to use the rock pool data, uh, species area curve rock pool data as an example. And then we'll go over the calculations in the uh, forest data set. So the list, the data is going to be listed a little something like this. I condensed it a little bit to be a little simpler for the video. Um, again, this is mock data or, or just data from previous semesters. And so none of you will have this exact data. So make sure you look at the data sets for your individual sections. You're going to have uh, four columns. One's going to show you which uh, area you're looking at in the rock pool data. You're, we're using the number of rock pools to estimate, um, to, to reference size, whereas in the forest, um, you have dimension. Um, if you're doing the forest in your section, you saw that we did. We marked out all of these up into 32 by 32. Um, so that's the analog in the rock pool example. Um, it'll be split up and you're going to have the common name uh, and you'll have another column for a scientific name. I'm just going to use common names here. And then you have number of new taxa and cumulative number of new taxa. Mm -hmm. So we have 10 pools total here, um, five on this side, five on this side. And what you're going to see here that I highlighted in black throughout this data set is the new number, the new taxa. When you have a repeat that you saw in a previous uh, area or training set, don't count it again. You just want the, the the taxa that you have not seen previously. So for this first pool, there's only two new species. Um, we have no species previously, so they're all new. And then the cumulative number is two. These will be the same. Second area, we have um, a species that's a repeat, so we're not going to count that one. We're just going to count this one. We're going to put one in this column and add one. To get the cumulative number, you're going to add the cumulative number from the previous transect and add it the number of new taxa from the current transect or pool. Then you're going to get the cumulative number for that area. Um, for the fourth one, we got a little more um, examples. Uh, we have two repeats and or new taxa. So we have four here, and we're going to add the cumulative from the last area, add the new taxa, and then you get the cumulative for this area. So you're going to keep doing that all the way to the end, and you'll get less and less repeats, or more and more repeats and less new taxa. Sorry. For this example, it may fluctuate throughout the data sets between sections. Um, we're going to see that in the second data set that I'm going to show you. It's not quite as nice looking as this one. Um, so, for this report, you're doing a half report in your appendix. You have one table and one graph. You do not have the table here for you, but it is just listing. You're taking all of the species that you have here and listing the number of times that you saw them. So it's going to be a current column. And you can see that in the example appendix on Canvas. But I'm going to go through the uh, graph for you. So it is a little ambiguous, candy. So you're going to have 
or two pawns to set up your draft. You can have a number of rock pools, if you do the rock pools, or you're gonna have the dimensions for the forest uh, species area curve. And the second column is gonna be cumulative number of species, which is um, this column right here and here. So number of rock pools is gonna be one through 10, and you're just gonna copy each um, cumulative number of taxa for each rock pool and put it into this table um, and then make this graph, which I'll show you how to do in the next uh, data set. Um, but this one I wanted to show because it does look um, more like the graph. Um, let me just draw this really quick. And we have the see the species area curve and the Brower and Czar handout. It's more or less going to look like that. And this graph is not quite as nice. It varies a lot through it. So um, I just wanted to make this point that um, I'll get rid of this. Okay. I wanted to make the point that you can your determination of your uh, species area curve and what you're getting from this is how many, how large of an area do you need a sample to get a representative, a good representation of a population or a community. And you're basically picking the point at which the feline asymptotes or levels off or there's, uh, not a lot of fluctuation between the, uh, uh, what's the word, the y value. So in this graph, I picked value seven right here as the total area that you would want to sample to get a representation of the community. Um, you can pick four, you can pick nine, you can pick eight. It's subjective. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're not being too specific on where this line asymptotes. You can do a bunch of math to find out, but we're not doing that here. Um, so just pick a point around where this line levels off. And it's gonna be a little different in the next example. And then I'll show you a couple of things about making this graph that will make it a little easier. So without further ado, we're gonna do the forest and it looks the same. Uh, I condensed this data set as well to make it a little more simple. So there's a couple more columns that might be in here. You don't need them. Um, when you are referring to these species in your paper, you may depending on your TA, refer to them, or may or may not be referring to them with scientific names, or if they're okay with common names, depends on your class. Um, I use the, com or the scientific name. Um, so I filled out the cumulative tax the same way that we went over in the rock pool data. Um, here we have three new species. Um, we have three, and the cumulative number is three. So these two are the same for the first dimension. Um, if this the difference between this data set and the second data set is uh, when they were out in the field, they weren't tracking the species that were repeats. So each new section only has the new new species. So that's why I didn't highlight or not highlight them. So four new species for this section. I'm going to add it to the cumulative and then last. And that gives us seven. Um, and you can do that throughout the whole thing. And down here, I've done the table already and filled it in. Um, and it looks a, a lot different from the rock pool data. There are different communities and different types of organisms. So, 
we want to make a graph to see how, uh, how large of a sample we need to get a representation of the population. So we're going to select this data. Make sure you have it in this order. And then you want to make a line graph. So I'm just going to go to basics. You know how to do most of this. I'm going to add titles. I'm going to take off the chart title. I'm going to remove the grid lines. That's it. And selecting the whole graph. I'm going to make it nice and big so you can actually see it. All right, time to Roman. So this graph doesn't, this one, this curve doesn't look anything like what you're going to see in the browser and so I hand out. And what I would do in this situation um, is guess or estimate that the I'm sorry, let me see what I'm doing. I'm going up here in an insert and go into a shapes. I'm going to add an arrow. And so you can draw an arrow where the population sample size should be. And I'm going to put it right here. And in my paper, I would write to do this and do a larger sample size because we're not really seeing the curve that we would expect um, from the species area curve like I drew before and like the rock pool data looks like. Why well, I put it there? Anywhere like in this area right here really. And to make this arrow, I showed you how to put it in the insert, but if you want to make it bigger, which you should go up here to this you know, under shape format and you click the arrow, you just have this option to hit shape, shape format. And then under this color option, you go to weight and add two and a quarter point. And I'm going to make it black. and make everything else in the graph flag. And so on the x-axis, you're going to want all of these visible. Make sure they're big enough so that in the paper you can see them. This, um, the x-axis is the dimension. You know, uh, y-axis title the cumulative number of new species. And I messed around with this bounds on here. Zero, uh, a five increment setting is what is going to be automatic, and that's fine for this. So for the actual line itself, you want markers. You're going to go up here to just click on the line. You're going to be at format data point under this with this little bucket symbol, and then hit marker. That's the marker option, built in. You can pick anyone you want. Um, and I'm, we want it pretty big. Um, I'd say like 10, point 10. Um, also, in addition to markers, when you click the line, you're under, you click the entire line. What does that mean? There you go. Under the bucket again, you're on here, under the line, it's made for line for aesthetics, you know. Um, 
Um, also, the minute is five in the marker is five. No, the marker is going to stay blue because the marker is not going to be. You can make them whatever color you want. Um, that's pretty much it for the analysis. Don't be wary about where the line asymptotes and what number you pick for your sample size, your optimum sample size. Pick a number that seems reasonable for what the species A or curve looks like. And if it looks crazy like this, then it's the end. All right, um, that's about all that I have for you. I apologize that this video is late. Uh, and good luck with the rest of your writing and your final paper. And have a good summer. <laughs>